Hello, today we are going to be working on 2.3, which is transformations of functions. So first we're going to look at some common functions and their characteristics, and then we'll look at how to transform those functions um, to get more complex functions. So this is the parent function. We call a parent function the simplest form of a particular type of function. So this is the parent function of the absolute value function. So the simplest form of the absolute value function is f of x is equal to the absolute value of x. And you can see that they have the domain range decreasing and increasing and then some points for the function that um, occur. If I was preparing for a test, I would make sure that I understood those points because it's easier to do the transformation if you have a starting point with those points. This is the um, parent function for the quadratic function. Um, and you see you have all the same details for you to review and get familiar with this function. This is the parent function for the square root function. Um, you need to realize that square root always has to be uh, less, greater than or equal to zero for the square root to be a function. So that's an important thing to note here. Uh, this is the cubic function. So uh, again, you see that you have all the same things, domain, range, increasing, um, whether the function's even or odd, and um, some points to get started with. And then this is the cube root of the function. You see um, it looks a lot like the cubed, except for it is turned, and that is because it is the inverse of the cube function. So let's think about how we can transform these functions. So um, this first one says that we have x squared. Um, so this is our parent function. We know what it looks like. So if we wanted to find um, x squared plus 3, when we have a plus outside of the x, anything plus, this is a change in y. And so it's going to move your y values up 3. So if we um, think about what the original points were for the quadratic function on the y side, when you had 0, so let me write it over here. When we have x and x squared, basically, you had um, 0, 0, 1, 1, negative 1, 1, 2, 4, and negative 2, 4. So if we want to have uh, this plus 3 right here, all we have to do, since it's a change in y, is add 3 to each one of these values. So if we add 3 to each one of those values, then we get 3, so the point zero, 3. We get 4, the point one, 4. We get 4, the point negative 1, 4. We get 7, the point 2, 7 and we get 7, the point negative 2, 7. So then we can plot those points. So if I wanted to plot those points, I have the point 0, 3, and then the point 1, 4, 2, 7, and then because this is a symmetric function, we see that those points are the same on the negative side, basically. So we have negative 1, 4, and negative 2, 7. And so this would be our quadratic function when we have plus 3. So um, 
we completed the table like it asked and we drew the coordinate and then um, when we're comparing the two we see that the only thing that happens to the parent function is that it's moved up three So that is a vertical shift. So the example we just did falls under a vertical shift. So you can uh, read through the vertical shift, but it's really just saying if you have plus a value on the outside of the original function, then you're moving up three. And if you um, have minus a value outside the original function, you're moving down three. So this is one of the exact same type using the absolute value function. And I'm going to give you the opportunity to attempt this one since we've already done one together. So you can pause this, um, work this problem, and then make sure that you check to make that you're right on Blackboard in the annotated notes. So on this one here, we see that this is a little different. We have this x cubed, which is our original parent function, and this time the plus one is inside of the um, inside of the original function, right? So instead of having x cubed plus one, like we had on the previous example, it's x plus one cubed. So in this case, we are actually changing our x values because it's on the inside of the function. And when we change our x values here, if it's plus one, we're moving to the left one. And if it's minus one, we're moving to the right one. And that's a little counterintuitive. So it's important to make sure that you get that, um, th that you remember that that's something that's going on here is that it's not always intuitive. So if we look at the points again for the original parent function, We have those points of um, 0, 0, 1, 1, negative 1, 1, 2, um, 2, negative 2, 2. Oh, no, nope, I'm sorry. That's the absolute value function. Give me just a second. The cubic function, I'm losing my mind, guys. The cubic function is 0, 0, 1, 1 negative 1, negative 1, uh, 2, 8, and negative 2, negative 8. So we could graph these points that are given for this x right here, but instead I want to show you how to apply it to the x values. So I'm just going to cross these out. We're not going to worry about this. I'm going to create a different table. So if we want x and we want x plus 1 cubed, the y value, let's make this a y so it doesn't get confusing. The y values from our original table are these values here. So I'm just going to copy those down because I'm not making a change to y. So those are 0, 1, negative 1, 8, and negative 8. But I am making a change to the x values, right? I'm moving it left one. So I'm actually subtracting one from each one of those x values. So this first x value, 0, right here, I'm doing 0 minus 1. So I get negative 1 here. Here I'm doing 1 minus 1. So I get 0 here. Here I'm doing negative 1 minus 1, so I get negative 2 here. Same thing here, 2 minus 1, I get 1 here. And negative 2 minus 1, I get negative, negative 3 here. So now we can plot those points and see how it changed the graph. So we have the point uh, negative one zero. So negative one zero. We have the point um, zero one. We have the point negative two one. 
Mm -hmm. Here's you one. We have the point uh, one eight, and we have the point negative three eight. And so when we draw this, you can see it looks just like the parent function, except for it's been moved to the left one. So the example we just did talks about horizontal shifts as our transformations. And again, it is counterintuitive. If it's plus C, you're moving to the left C units. If it's minus C, you're moving to the right C units. And so it's kind of the opposite of what you might normally think. So this is applying a horizontal shift. So again, since we already did one together, I'm going to give you the opportunity to do this one. Um, and then you can check yourself against the annotated notes in Blackboard. Now, the reflection about the x-axis comes from applying a negative on the outside of the function, right? And so that would just be reflecting across the x-axis. So let's take a look at an example together. So on this example here, our parent function is the cube root of x. And so I'm going to draw the parent function in purple just to um, give you this visualization of how this changes. So the parent function of a cube root um, has this point at 0, 0, a point at 1, 2, a point at negative 1, 2, Oh, I'm sorry. One, one, a point at negative one, one. A point at um, eight, two, and a point at negative eight, negative two. So this is the parent function. So when we reflect across the x-axis, we're taking this x-axis and the points that were there, we're just mirroring them, mirroring them over. So this first point doesn't change because when you apply a negative to a zero, it doesn't change. But the second point becomes one negative one. Um, this point here, negative one, uh, positive one. This point here, 8, negative 2, and this point here, negative 2, 8. I mean, I'm sorry, 8, negative 8, 2. There we go. So you see this reflection that occurs here. It comes from reflecting about the x-axis. So this is being applied to the y values, right? Only our y values changed. Our x values remain the same here. So this is a change in y. So you would apply it to the y values when you're looking at the points. Then we have um, the vertical stretching. So vertical stretching occurs when you are multiplying a, a constant to the original function. So if it's a constant that's greater than one, it is being stretched by a multiple on the y coordinates. If it's a function that falls between zero and one, so a fraction function where the denominator is bigger than the numerator, then it's a vertical shrink by a multiple of that c on the y values. So let's take a look at an example like that. So here, um, we are multiplying by 2. So if we just remember the points from our original function, the parent function of f of x, I'm going to graph those. So we have the point 0, 0, 1, 1, negative 1, 1, 2, 2, negative 2, 2. So we're looking at this function here. 
if I want to apply this multiplication of two, what's happening, so if we look at those original points, the points that we graphed here, x and f of x, um, we graph the point uh, 0, 0, 1, 1, negative 1, 1, 2, 2, and negative 2, 2, right? So if we are going to go to our next function, we have x times 2 of f of x, because that's essentially what's occurring here. Our x values stay the same, and our y values are being multiplied by 2. So 2 times 0 will give me 0. 2 times 1 will give me 2. 2 times 1 will give me 2. 2 times 2 will give me 4, and 2 times 2 will give me 4. So this one, we see that our or our point at the origin doesn't change because multiplying by 0 doesn't change anything. And then we have a point 1, 2. We have a point 2, 4. We have a point negative 1, 2. And we have a point negative 2, 4. So now our function looks like this. We see it's only changing the y values here. All right, so um, because we have order of operations when we're doing a math problem, um, when you're working with these functions numerically, we also have order of operations when we do transformations. So that's important to realize. So let's go ahead and look at a more complicated one that applies more than one transformation. So we want to sketch the graph of y equals negative 2 x minus 4 squared plus 3. So we're applying all of the transformations here, right? This minus 4 tells me we're going to go right 4. This plus 3 tells me we're going to go up 3. This minus tells me we're reflecting about the x-axis. This 2 tells me that we are stretching by a factor of 2. So a lot is happening here. But if you think about this in a way of how you would apply to your x and your y values and work with those points, that can really help you. So let's do our original parent function in those points. So if I'm thinking about my parent function of um, that's going on here, we have x squared. So it is a quadratic function. You should see a parabola when you graph this. So let's think about the points for a parabola that we uh, saw in our previous notes. So the points for a parabola are negative 2, 4, negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, and 2, 4 are the points of a parabola. So if I want to think about what's being applied to x and what's being applied to y, that will help us get where we need to go here. So this minus 4 on the inside right here, this is being applied to x, right? That's going to happen to x before um, anything else happens to x. So what we're doing to our x values here is essentially doing x plus 4 when we're finding the points because we're moving it right 4, okay? And so this is right 4, okay? Even though it's minus in our original problem, it's plus when we apply it to the x values. So then the y values, what we're doing there is once we have our y values, we're doing plus 3 um, after we multiply by negative 2. So for our y values, we're going to do negative 2y plus 3. That's what's going on here. That's going to reflect it, stretch it, and move it up 3. So reflect, stretch, and up 3. So I can just apply those changes to the x and y values that we just talked about. So here, negative 2 plus 4 
gives me positive 2. Negative 1 plus 4 gives me positive 3. 0 plus 4 gives me 4. 1 plus 4 gives me 5. And 2 plus 4 gives me 6. Now I can apply the changes to y. So for the y, I'm going to substitute it in over here so it's easier to see. So negative 2 times 4 plus 3. Well, negative 2 times 4 would be negative 8 plus 3 would be negative 5. Negative 2 times 3 plus 3. Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6 plus 3 is negative 3. Negative 2 times Oh, it shouldn't be 3, should it? It should be 1. We're taking the values from here. So this should be 1 here. Okay, so negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, plus 3 would be positive 1. And negative 2 times 0 plus 3 would just be positive 3, because 0 times anything is 0. So then now we're substituting in 1, so negative 2 times 1 plus 3 equals um, negative 2 times 1 is negative 2 plus 3 is positive 1. And then 4 again, so negative 2 times 4 plus 3. Again, negative 2 times 4 is 8, negative 8 plus 3 is negative 5. So now we can plot the points of this. So if I plot these points that I found, I have the point 2, negative 5. So 2, negative 5. I have the point 3, 1. So 3, 1. I have the point 4, 3. 4, 3. I have the point 5, 1, and I have the point 6, negative 5. So this is my function. And I can check this by thinking about where my other function was. So I did move, let's think about um, this point right here. That point did move to the right 4. Okay, everybody see that? To the right 4. It did move up 3. Okay, so we did reflect from the negative because we have it going down instead of up. Our parabola before went up, right? It went up. And then we have a multiple of 2 going on here because it is stretched out by a factor of 2. So it looks great. All right, so this one I'm going to give you all the opportunity to try. And then you can refer back to your notes to make sure that um, you did it correctly. So again, uh, pause the video, try this, and then check the annotated notes to make sure that you are on track. So um, we also can just describe translations by verbally using words of what's going on here. So we can tell here that this parent function is the square root function. So this square root function, because of this plus 4, is going up 4. And then that minus reflects across the x-axis. So let's think about it and write it out in words. So the graph... of f of x equals the square root of x will be reflected over the x-axis and then moved up 4. So we can do the same thing on this one here. 
we see that this one third is being multiplied or um, shrunk by a factor of one third. This minus two tells me we're going to move right to. And this minus five tells me we're going to move down five. So if we were to write that in words, um, the original function is the cube function. So we'd say the graph of f of x equals x cubed will be shifted to the right to from by one third and translated down five. So now we've described that in words as well. So the last thing is for you to make a function based off of what you see from a graph. So we see the parent function in black here is the quadratic function. So now we see we've been moved this point right here has been moved to the left too. So that means that f of x, or I'm sorry, g of x in this case, we're doing g of x, g of x equals, first thing we're doing here is x plus two because we moved to the left too. Then we know that's squared. And then it's reflected across the x-axis, so we know that there is a negative out here. So we have negative x plus 2 squared. Here we see that our parent function is f of x is equal to the square root of x. So this time, this point was moved to the right 2 and up 1, 2, 3. So right 2, up 3. And it was also reflected. So we have g of x equals the square root, or negative square root, right? Because it was reflected. Negative square root of x. We went to the right two. So we're going to do minus two. And then we went up three, so plus three on the outside. And so that is how you would get the function from the graph by looking at those transition, the translations that were made. So that concludes 2.3. So next time we're together, we will work on 2.4.